Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with Joe Midlands, my SmackDown Live 205 Live Memphis review. Certainly not a bad uh, show. It's probably going to be a bit shorter, though, this review, because I still have my Money in the Bank predictions to do. <clears throat> and also as the go-home show for Money in the Bank, which, by the way, is streaming live on Sunday, this Sunday, on the WWE Network, and is free for new subscribers. Uh, if WWE is going to keep driving home the whole thing and free for new subscribers, I'm going to put my own spin on. I'm going to drive that joke into the ground which I tend to do with a lot of jokes. To be fair, if you've followed me on Twitter for a while or even for a week, you figure out that I drive some jokes into the ground. And I'm happy about that because I like using the same jokes and having fun. Anyway, they had they started off with the SmackDown Women's Summit page. <coughs> was overseen. The promos between Charlotte, Becky, Becky, sweet Jesus, she's beautiful, Naomi, and Lana, who dropped her accent during this whole thing. They needed to have Lana drop that accent way before now, way before now, but she did, thankfully. They need to have Rusev do a less heavy accent. Uh, he does have an accent, but he's still, ta if you've ever heard her, him in interviews, he's really, he's one, he's super likable, but also he doesn't have nearly that heavy of an accent. I think it could work by doing this because you need to add a little more realism in your sports entertainment, pal. That's probably the best Vince impression I've ever done, and it's one of the worst Vince impressions I've ever heard. But <clears throat> they had Lana drop the accent. Cool. Hey, wait, Lana, weren't you just Russian a second ago? Um, Kofi, weren't you just Jamaican a second ago? That's pretty much what it reminded me of. But hey, decent enough uh, promos from the ladies, especially Becky. Sweet Jesus, I could listen to her talk all day. Sorry, she's gorgeous. She just is. Um, I like the idea of Charlotte and Becky possibly having maybe a feud leading up into SummerSlam, something like that. Or, I mean, it probably would just happen at Extreme Rules. On the kickoff, they would probably put them on the kickoff because they're loading up the cards with so many damn matches. Everybody gets a match that they probably would do that. Hopefully not, though. The women are very talented. But I'd be all for a feud happening because these two, while great friends, can be great rivals. <clears throat> the Iconics showed up. The Iconics are great at cutting promos. Billy and Peyton are very good at cutting promos. Very good at getting heat. Creative needs to find better material for them, though. These jokes aren't necessarily working. Not doing the best. It's it's not getting the right kind of heat, my opinion. Sonia showed up. Mandy was also there. Sorry, Mandy is not very good. Whatever, though. That's just my opinion. I mean, may, maybe Mandy will get better, and maybe I'll be struck by lightning. I think the second option is far more likely. <clears throat> then we had the four women in the ring, Lana, Naomi, Becky and Charlotte say, hey, we're just going to go fight these women. So we, they went and fought these women and then cut away. And all the time they put the, uh, like, at least three, what, three, four times during this, whole, during this whole show, they put the, you know, Money in the Bank VTR, which, again, is streaming live on the WWE Network this Sunday and is free for nude subscribers. And then we start off with uh, Brian versus Shelton. Decent match. Decent enough. You had uh, Shelton at one point do a really scary spot with Brian's knee on the announcer's table. Ouch. Brian sold the knee really well. Some good stuff, some good action. Brian was able to come back and finally and finally get the victory. Of course he was, and that was good. And they also played Daniel Bryan's promo where he pretty much cut down a uh, big cast. I think it was before the match, and that was really good, too. It was a way to hype up him, the fact that he tore into big cast, and that was tremendous. But good enough match. Daniel Bryan got the victory. <clears throat> Shelton did look weak. This was a nice little TV match. Nothing great. And Oscar and Carmella um, are going to be in the main event tag. So now it's a 10-woman tag match. Teddy Long's wet dream. Have fun on seeing that. I'm going to go throw up after this review. Um, he's gained his last name just thinking about it. Miz is dressed up um, as a referee. He's going to be in a movie that he's he said to page called Rough, Rough, Ref. Got to be honest, I probably watch it as opposed to m most of the shit in Hollywood these days. I mean, could it be worse than Airbud? It really couldn't. I mean, yeah, I guess Airbud 1 was okay, but then all the other sequels, come on. I think I only ever watched the first one anyway, and it was like, it was in that weird glut of 1997 movies. 96 or 97, it was one of two. One of two years. <clears throat> but Miz, was, Miz wants to be the referee for the Joe and Rusev match because of the whole thing that happened where Joe and Rusev laid him out last week. Okay, nice little tie together, and cool, Miz is happy. And then Lawler interviews AJ Styles. Okay, whatever, happened. A Memphis boy and a, Georgia, and a Georgia Southern boy are talking. That's about it. It was really just a short interview and no nut shots, no nothing. Then Joe versus Rusev. Miz is a referee. He had some shenanigans, this kind of stuff, and Miz not wanting to make the count. He was mad at both guys. Then ended up being more mad at Joe. 
Um, and then, you know, was even though Joe had the pin on Rusev, he like wouldn't pin. He, w he wouldn't make the count. And then Rusev hit the Machka kick. One, two, three. And Rusev won. Cool. Okay. Hey, jo Rusev's one of very few people that has pinned Joe since Joe's come to the main roster. Now, to be fair, Joe has had some injuries where he's been out for a little bit. So maybe that's not all that great. I mean, in about the year and a half he's been on the main roster or close to it, he's been injured a, a bit of that time. I'd say about six months worth. Not that great. That 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 kind of sucks, but is what it is. Anyway, so yeah, Miz then, um, you know, Miz then ends up, uh, you know, he's he's outside the ring. Rus Rusev goes to get the ladder. Well, like Aiden get, helps him get the ladder. <clears throat> Rusev, Rusev goes to climb. Miz hits Skull Crush finale. Miz climbs to the top, gets the briefcase. He's celebrating. Yay, you know, open this, that. There's a contract in that briefcase. There's not a contract. There were pancakes in that briefcase. New day! He's like, you know, doing like this. You blew it up. Or Robot House! Um, that's pretty much what it reminded me of. It reminded me of a whole bunch of stuff. I would say it actually reminded me more of Planet of the Apes, except we needed more senile yelling. And Charlton Heston wasn't senile at the time that movie came out. But I, I just uh, the Futurama thing, Robot House. Um, <clears throat> but good enough match. It was good enough antics. New Day's all laughing backstage because, you know, that's what, that's what Vince thinks three black men would do is laugh over food. Hey, whatever. New Day's super over. I. It's time to get... Do we know who the who the person is that's going to be in the match? Do we know? Did they announce it? I don't think they announced it. Is it going to be Big E? Is it going to be Woods? Is it going to be Xavier? As opposed to Woods? Is it going to be Kofi? I'm just going to leave that botch in because, you know what, I'm just going to have fun here. Honestly. I mean, you know, Derb's not here. I'm just going to leave all my botches in as opposed to what I normally do. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Big E? Is it gonna be Woods? Is it gonna be Xavier? I mean, is it gonna be? Is, <clears throat> is it gonna be Kofi? Here's the whole point. I don't care who. I think it should be Big E, quite frankly, because I think you need three muscle guys in there. Now, I mean, Kofi being in it was cool. Xavier, the chances of anybody winning go dramatically go down dramatically once it gets to Xavier. No offense against Xavier, but I mean, he's pretty much like he's like the Buddy Roberts of the group. He doesn't really win all that much. Or at least, he, at least he always gets, like, you know, beat up mainly. But anyway, so, uh, Bo, uh, so you have Jeff Hardy versus Nakamura. Decent uh, match. Both are great entrances. Jeff is moving like he's about 55 or 60, and it's frightening. I know he's dealing with injuries. I know he's beat up his body, but I'm just worried with how he's moving. Please, Jeff, if you're going to retire at any point, if, if the Hardy's contract is a three-year contract and they go to 2020, so that would be Mania 36. <coughs> Then they both need to retire after that. I mean, Matt might be able to continue the gimmick. I don't know. I think it's going to run its course in WWE. But Jeff's got to be done soon. It, honestly, he just has to be. Decent match, though. It looked like Jeff was going to get the victory. He ain't, he ain't the Swanton Bomb, but couldn't quite cover Nakamura quick enough. And Nakamura, of course, ends up hitting a low blow because that's all Nakamura does. He is, you know, he, he's the ball-busting artist. That's pretty much what he is. Um, yet... It, it was ridiculous, and then of course he beats up Jeff Hardy, and it was all that, and yeah, okay, it, it was what it was. Carmella and Big Cass had trash promos. Good, good. Carmella needs to lose the title, and Big Cass needs to be off the off the roster. Put him in NXT. It worked for others. Maybe it could work for him. I mean, he's not really doing anything, but whatever. Big Cass, the Big Cass Brian feud is what Zayn and Lashley is on Raw. It's just nothing. Creative just had nothing for them. Daniel Bryan's trying to make it work as best he can. <clears throat> you have two bearded guys trying to make things work with two guys that really don't seem like they give a shit. Though Cass seems like he doesn't give a shit way more. Lashley, it or way less or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Lashley seems to be doing just fine. But anyway. So yeah, then we had Naomi, Charlotte, Lana, Becky, and Oscar. Forgive me for looking down on my notes. Versus Billy, Peyton, Mandy, Sonya, and Carmella. It was good, but it was messy. It was a typical schmoz. It was not the first uh, women's 10 or the 10 woman tag. There was another one. Somebody tweeted out, and I don't remember what it was. But it, I don't remember what year, but it was back when Crystal was still with the company. So that tells you something. But it was what it was. It, this wasn't a bad match. The faces were, of course, going to go over. There were a ton of uh, pinfall breakups and <clears throat> stuff like that, and some good moves. A bit of good psychology, except when Carmella, Mandy, 
Lana was in there. Naomi's a good athlete, but Naomi, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Naomi. I'm just not. But the Pacers get the win. It looked like Carmella was actually going to pin Asuka. She didn't. Lana, of all people, broke up the pin. And then Carmella tapped out to Asuka, which doesn't bode well for Money in the Bank, but I hope means that Asuka will actually somehow win. I fear she won't, but whatever. I'm going to say B minus. B minus for SmackDown. It wasn't great, but it had its moments and built stuff up nicely as far as as far as uh, you know, Money in the Bank was going. It wasn't a great show. The main event was messy, <clears throat> and there were a couple eh, things in there, but it had its moments. I'll say B minus. And then we go to 205 Live. Drake hypes up the uh, the card, and then we have Team Do a Good Lucha thing. Oh God damn it! Woo! Kalisto, Lince Dorado, and Grand Metalik. Versus Drew Gulak, Jack Gallagher, and Brian Kendrick. This match could have gone probably about five minutes shorter, and I don't think anybody would have missed it. Honestly, you probably should have given the main event a little bit more time, <clears throat> even though that was a good match. But yeah, this match went on too long, and I have nothing against ma long matches if they're good, but this was not very good. It just, it just really, really wasn't. But told a good story and everything. Drew tried holding the tights on Lince. That didn't work. And then... Kendrick got his tights held for the victory and team good, do a good lucha thing. One, they brought out a pinata with Gulak's face on it because comedy, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like Gulak. I just, I just don't like the whole lucha house party thing. I, I just don't. I mean, it gives them something to do. I'm just, I'm not the biggest fan of Kaliso, even though he's good in the ring. I don't know. It just, to, to me, it's almost borderline racist. To me, it's, it's not as bad as the Mexicals. Don't get me wrong, but it's almost borderline racist. Them bringing out those. Whatever those, whatever those spinny things are. Sorry, I don't know what they are, and I, I can't be bothered to look look it up. But just kind of the way they are, I was like, eh, whatever. Hey, you know, maybe, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Um, then we had, uh, they were hyping Hideo, uh, attacking Ali and Murphy the previous week. And then Tozawa beat a uh, guy named Steve Irby, I believe. Arby, Irby. Not Arby, he does not have the meats. Guy had an impressive look, though, and hit some pretty good moves for being, you know, for just being used as an enhancement talent. So, I don't know if he signed to a full-time contract, but maybe give the guy a shot. He's got a good look. Why not? You need more guys in the Performance Center. You need more guys in the NXT when you keep calling people up. You might want to release some guys, too, but... <coughs> and some women, by the way. They probably are going to do that. But this guy, hey, why not? Of all the jobbers they brought on, this guy has a pretty good look. But yeah, it's his old one. Leo Rush vignette. Whatever. Hey, I'm sorry. After he no-sold that whole damn thing that I saw in that one video, that video clip, I, the guy really doesn't have my respect. I mean, sorry, but that no-selling, that whole thing, powerbomb through some tables or package pile driver through some tables, that's bullshit. Not saying the guy isn't talented. Maybe he'll change my mind on 205 Live, but whatever. And then we had uh, Mustafa Ali and Tony Nice. Cedric Alexander came into the uh, cor corner of Ali. Tony Nese had Buddy Murphy with him. Good match. Good match. It was really well done. Cedric Murphy were at ringside. They ended up fighting a little bit later. There was a bad landing on a lariat. Tony Nese kind of slipped. Ali ended up getting the... Uh, Ali ended up, you know, taking a bad bump on this lariat. Still not bad. Good stuff. And then um, Ali won. 0-5-4. And then he wanted a triple threat match with Murphy and Hideo thrown in next week. So, so Drake Maverick said he will do that. <coughs> so I'll say B for 205 Live. B minus, B minus, because the six-man tag went on too long. Still, this was much easier to stomach than Raw. So what do you guys think of this show? And what do you guys think of my reviews? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Also, it's been Real Honesty with John Ritlin. Be back with my Money in the Bank predictions. See you soon.